All right, welcome to the Robert Show. We are here at Snowflake Summit. It's day two, and look who are with me, uh, Sef, uh, who's the field CTO at Snowflake, and Ganesh, founder and CEO of uh, Trust Logics. Super excited to host you both, and want to learn a little about data security, the key announcements that have been made at uh, Snowflake, and much more. But just for our audience, would you like to quickly introduce yourself and tell us more about what you do, Sef? Uh, Seth Youssef, I'm based out of Paris, France. I'm a global field CTO for security and governance here in Snowflake. Thank you. Uh, uh, Ravid, uh, this is Ganesh Kirti, and uh, founder CEO of Trustlogix. First of all, I want to so excited at the Snowflake Summit here. It's a real great community of data leaders and data engineers and uh, data experts here. Really seeing the great collaboration here, really excited to be here. Love it. And uh, I'm kind of also uh, curious to know about the partnership that Snowflake and Trustlogix have. Uh, How is it? Uh, what's the angle there? Sef? Actually, the partnership between Snowflake and, and Trustlogix, it has two levels. So level number one, which is I'm a techie guy, so I'll speak from technical level. Yes. Trustlogix builds the platform with native controls and native supports. So the customers, they have easy interface to you to go and uh, apply their policies, and that will be pushed down to Snowflake using our native controls. Nice. And in terms of the partnership, uh, Trustlogic has um, a good relationship with Snowflake, and we have a pretty much good amount of shared customers. They are happy to be part of this uh, partnership. Love it. Ganesh? Yeah, no, I think it's uh, great to be partnering with uh, Snowflake. You know, we've been a partner of uh, Snowflake for a couple of years now. Nice. Work closely with the product managers, field CTOs like Seth and his team, uh, the salespeople and sales engineers. Uh, you know, real our uh, real uh, mission here is to, you know, customers really invest in Snowflake. Right. Because they have like a huge data needs and Snowflake scales massively. Yes. So our goal is to really make sure that the sc security scales for them. Security doesn't become a blocker so that True. they can really get the data insights going much, much faster without getting blocked on security. That's really been working great so far. That's fantastic. Also, Ganesh, quick question for you. Yesterday, we saw so many announcements around AI, secure, data security. Uh, what are your thoughts? Anything that you would like to share with our audience? Yeah, no, it's uh, we saw the Sridhar from uh, Snowflake CEO and uh, Jensen from NVIDIA CEOs talked about how they have, uh, you know, integrating the AI into the Snowflake data cloud. Right. And they also talked about the data is going to grow huge petabytes and huge amounts of data uh, because of, uh, you know, the AI, you know, you know the, the demand for the AI applications. So that's really where we come in. As you can see here at our booth, the data complexity is growing. It's growing exponentially. Right. So with that, the security complexity is growing. Yeah. And that's really where we are coming in. Uh, that's really where we are coming in to help our customers to streamline right. and control that data sprawl uh, and then help them build the AI in a secure fashion. So we really want to bring our customers to become AI security ready so that they can deploy Gen AI applications. These are fantastic insights. Thanks for sharing, Ganesh. Uh, any thoughts? Uh... Definitely with introducing uh, Snowflake as um, ML for enterprise. That comes with quite challenges as well for customers. Like for example, now you need to make sure you have the right data set for training. You need to have the, and not only that, you need to make sure your data quality is good. You need to make sure the data that is being used for training is well protected. Right. And then, and on top of that, the data that you will use for inference need to be protected as well. And it has to be seen by only the authorized parties. And on top of this, uh, now the training code, the inference code, the notebooks that is running on top of the machine learning pipeline, all of this needs to be visible and need to be controlled. Like for example, you store your models, you retire your models, you need to monitor the models that are obsolete. All of this has to be tracked and has to have a very strict attribute-based access control and uh, role-based access control as well. This is awesome. Thanks for sharing that. Also quickly wanting to learn a little about the AI security. What are your thoughts about AI security? So, you know, we've been working with uh, Snowflake team very closely. Uh, we've been very, you know, closely partnering with the product team. Uh, you know, Snowflake has announced a lot of AI capabilities, mm -hmm. and they've been doing that. You know, Cortex, and yesterday we talked about NVIDIA platform integrations. Right. Um, so the way we look at it is, uh, you know, as the, pro as the AI applications are deployed, there are multiple, you know, components there. There's a models that are being deployed. You want to make sure that the models are secured. And there is no anonymous, or there is no shadow, you know, models being deployed. So we want to really help customers to ensure that there is no data poisoning happening in those models. Right. So we have security around that, so that the models are deployed, and managed, and accessed securely. Mm. That's one part of it, and the second part of it is the data. Right. So we want to make sure that the data doesn't sprawl, data doesn't get, you know, leaked. 
you know when applications are using and then also which applications are consuming and what type of data is getting into those applications we want to protect them with the least privilege access controls and then we also want to continuously monitor the data and data how the data is used so that's really where we are helping out our customers yes. to become ai ready that's awesome those are great insights uh sef so basically you have the ml pipeline which basically starts from the data as uh, ganesh mentioned and ends up with the uh, utility how right. you want to use that model and on top of that auditing and monitoring is very very important here like you need to monitor the performance of the model if there is any model poisoning right the shadow ml is a very very um, important point here like you need to make sure it's all uh, brought under your enterprise control okay. now in snowflake we have multiple offering of um, of um, uh, machine learning so one could be like a customized model where customers have full control and this is where like um, uh, trust logic for example can come and help with the full pipeline we have other services like cortex for example that offer you fine tuned models where you have a, a specific set of control while snowflake offers is the full infrastructure mm -hmm. and then you have like the just you use out of the box everything snowflake offers which basically you can consider it like a ml as a service right yes. so where all the uh, aspects of the machine learning is controlled by snowflake customers have the full control over their their data and the outcome as well is under control using um, whatever a back or or b back or the futuristic context based access control Love it. One last question for both of you. In terms of the future of data security, how do you see it in the next, obviously with the AI component coming into the game as well, how do you see it uh, moving in the next uh, maybe 6 to 12 months? Ganesh? Yeah, no, I think, you know, uh, we think the security has to be fundamental uh, right. to bring the AI, you know, to, the, to do the justice to the AI, the way it's happening now. Uh, you know, the way we look at it is the problem is a little bit different compared to, you know, the, the what's going on with other, you know, the, the vendors here, right? We believe that the data owners today, right, they are taking more and more ownership of data. Right. And they get usually challenged by the security people looking for, you know, is the data secured, is it, you know, risk, and is there any risk, right? So they get slowed down when they start adopting the, you know, data, right? So what we are doing is we are trying to build a trust logic as a security platform that brings the collaboration between the data and security people. Nice. So that yeah. the security doesn't block the data owners and data, so that they can build Very data important. products, data federation, build GNI applications. Uh, so we believe in you know bringing the you know the security and data people together True. by through an easy to use tool with a native integration with these data platforms. Yes. So that the investments are, you know, fully, you know, you know, you know, utilized by the data people. True, Sef, What do you think? Well, you know, it, it's no doubt. Like uh, in my conversation, it's very. You don't need to convince customers with the importance of the machine <laughs> learning, right? The only, the only thing that we need to have to close the the gap as fast as possible between the customer compliance and security teams and the business side of the house. As fast as easy, you make it for them. They can adopt these technologies at enterprise level. Love it. Uh, these are great insights, uh, Sef, Ganesh. Uh, thanks for doing this. Thanks for taking the time out. Uh, love chatting with both of you. And uh, uh, another last question for both of you, actually. If folks want to reach out to you, which is the best place? Is LinkedIn, email, what's the best place? For me, is LinkedIn. Fantastic. Ganesh? And they can uh, reach to trustlogics.io or nice. they can also read Ganesh Kirti on LinkedIn. Okay, fantastic. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you, everyone, for watching us today.